All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to the Dota 2 Canada Cup Season 2 Grand Finals. It is, of Three course, a best of five series between Pretty Boy Swag and Swag and Tiger. Once again, my name is Juan. Joining me tonight is Helium. How are you, sir? I'm doing, I'm doing good. I got to see most of Game 1. I was a little busy in Photoshop, as you guys on stream will see soon. But I, I caught most of the game. I was surprised that Swag and Tiger, you know, did so well. I Radiant wouldn't expect Pretty Boy Swag to be... The favorites here, and I would assume Dota 2 Lounge is uh, doing that as well. But Swagon Tiger, definitely a capable team, and they played that match with the lineup that they basically used in the last Sunday Evening Cup Series match, which they did lose to IX Mike and a couple other uh, IX DL stars. Yeah, and it's surprising, of course, that Pretty Boy Swag. I think went down to the lineup that they had, but obviously, I think it was a very strong lineup. And Pretty Boy Swag's draft wasn't the best, in my opinion. I think they. Got maybe a little too greedy. I, I don't know about the Venomous for first pick, honestly, and, and there's a whole lot about the lineup that just didn't sit right with me. So I don't know if you feel the same way, but that's my feelings in the entire process. Yeah, uh, well, I was I was I was pretty audio only for a while, so it's it's harder to tell off of that. But I mean, Venomancer, he he warrants the first pick if you can work it into your lineup. Or, I mean, he's very annoying, and the Plague Ward's giving you vision in the daytime. Of course, they're a little reduced at night right now, which has definitely helped out. Uh, and, well, now Swag on Tiger, pick. they're picking it up first here. Yep, and, and they decided to go for it this time around, it, and I guess that's fine, I suppose, but I, I just feel like, for some reason, that hero is, like, it's good, I know it's really good, I'm, I'm aware it's very good, but, like, I just personally am not the biggest fan of picking it first, and I feel like you can get so much done with other heroes. Obviously, Alchemist is banned, that's one of the heroes that I would like to see, like, it back, obviously, or even a Slark, or even, like, Crystal main, but the Venomator is remaining. good as well, and and it, it works, I think. So so I can tiger they go for that. They could even go Five for another kind of pushing remaining. lineup like they had in the previous game, not pushing, but more team fight oriented. So uh, I don't mind it, but pretty much Swag, they have two pickups now, and they really need to get this this game going the way because if they lose this game, then they're down two, and they're in a pretty big hole. <clears throat> Yeah, for sure. It's, I mean, it is a best of five, and of course you can come back from these things. Uh, you can come back even in best of sevens if we go over to the Chinese scene. As long as there's a power lunch, you know, in between. <laughs> that, that nice you know, little you, lunch. Anything break, yeah. is possible, That's but true. when you pick up the Veno first, it's a support that doesn't have a stun. It has a slow. It's pretty much just annoying. I think you need to pick up the slack elsewhere with a really strong mid lane or a strong carry that can be, can be left alone or, or can provide a stun Dial so that you can get kills and people aren't just going to TP out. Or just really stack the slows. I mean, Venomancer and Viper together are really scary. Radiant team yeah. pick. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's that's a lot of aids, as people would would, would say. So I yeah, think that'd be tough to deal with. Bad. And the good thing is, Pretty Boy Swag pick up the Clockwork, which uh, Cakes plays very very well. And then they have the Chen as well, which is another strong hero that uh, Sheep should play. Pandago also plays those micro intensive heroes. I think it's going to be Pandago playing that, and I think that's a lot better than what they had in the previous draft, especially with the seconds, Clockwork, which is here you don't see too often because it gets banned a lot, but uh, with the Timber Solid going for Swag and Tiger, hopefully they do it a little bit better than what Case did in the last game, and it's still going to be a close one. I think this draft, I think, no no, no team is really like looking time. awful in the draft, and no team is looking super strong either. Dire team yeah, and back. Swag, they go with that Chen pick. I mean, Sheep, I'm a Sheep Sucks, usually plays the Enchantress, and if Pandago's playing the 5, then he might play Chen. Like you said, they do like to bounce back and forth on those micro heroes. We'll see, but Clockwork on the Dire in the offlane, it's definitely a strong pickup. Also nice to, to sort of shut down Timbersaw if you hook into him. Five Timbersaw, and there's like an 80% chance he's not going to go to his Timber Chain because of the Battery Assault mini stuns. Mm -hmm. So it, it sort of provides lockdown there. And then if you don't get him, you do just put yourself in a Cogs and you're going to get a Saw Blade uh, thrown on you. So I don't know, Clockwork yeah, can good. focus that down or just die if he, if he messes up. That's the thing. It's like, yeah, you've got a clacker against a Timbersaw, and in, unless you have a couple of your heroes to help out, Timbersaw's just going to wreck your face, especially, assuming he has mana at least, and, and just like the damage to deal to you. So they will have to be careful with that. Um, there's a couple other options for them to go for in terms of heroes that can help the Timbersaw into the later stages of the game, obviously, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to worry about what they're picking up next, what they're banning next, assuming that look at what they're banning in terms of the mids. It's just going to be the OD and, of course, the Storm Spirit bans as well. Amos has played the Storm Spirit last game. It was a safe land farming Storm Spirit, which didn't do that well for him. So I'm surprised they went that route. Um, I guess there's no real carry remaining. players here, but... I mean, I'm not sure if that, if that was the best idea. They go for the Luna this time around. I feel like that's a lot better than what they had before. And then the Invoker on Swag and Tiger. Wow, this is like the same exact lineup that Pretty Boy Swag had. Interesting. I mean, Swag and Tiger trying to prove a point here. 
But uh, you mentioned that Pretty Boy Swag sort of doesn't have their carry, and they pick up a hero that we see Demise play a lot for them, and that is the Luna. And he does it well, so probably going to be MSS handling that. This, Of course, he is primarily a mid player, but Ryu Boru is, of course, you know, going to stick on that role. He was there, lining up the Sun Strikes in game one quite nicely. Yeah, I gotta say, man, I, I don't know if this Invoker can live up to the expectations that Ryu had in the first game. I mean, he had a few, like, nice Sun Strikes. He only missed, like, a couple, too. The thing is, though, right now for Pretty Boy Swag, like you mentioned, Demise is not here. MSS is a very strong farmer because he is that mid player and he, he does know how to get last six. The question is, is he going to be effective as a carry? And I think he can be. I think he's a solid all around player. But he, like you said, Swag and Tiger is like trying to prove a point with their picks here. And like, I don't know if they were offended by the last game or if they're like trying to prove something. I, I, I just don't know. It's very interesting that they go forward. The maybe, exact maybe, maybe Pretty Boy Swag just drafted all the heroes they wanted in game one and then. Now they've got their opportunity to get the heroes they wanted first, so who, who knows. But uh, Pretty Boy Swag here, they pick up the Chen, they pick up the Luna, and look at their bans. They ban out an Enchantress as well as a Crystal Maiden, two heroes that are amazing at shutting down any of the creeps that Chen is going to bring to the lane to push. So it looks like they, obviously with the Clockwork, really want to invest heavily in this safe lane that is going to push down those towers quickly. Maybe look for both of those towers being down by maybe the seven minute mark. We'll see. Yeah. But that gives Timbersaw a lot of experience if you're going to just push into his tower. Yeah, and that's a little bit of the give and take there. It's like, okay, we get the tower, but now there's more room for him to farm. There's more room to be effective and just get even more last hits and obviously experience to run the map really around. But, you know... Maybe I'm not sure if that's the case. Remaining. Obviously, they could do something else. They can even go aggressive. Five I don't think they will with remaining. this lineup. Obviously, because they have a chance that's not going to happen. But I don't know what I was thinking there. But either uh, either way, they have the Shadow Demon though coming up from Swag and Tiger with the Radiant Invoker. That's going to be the Sun Strike combo going through, and that's a bit of damage. And Ryu, he showed that MSS helped him out with the poles, getting those Sun Strikes. The real thing was that Ryu didn't need those uh, poles to Dial like actually hit those sun strikes. He hit a lot of them, just kind of randomly, sporadically throughout the map, just showing he 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 had the skill to do so. The question is, the Invoker going to be able to do that this time around? And I'm excited to see if he can, because that's he's got the Shadow Demon to help out. Yeah, I know. If you're an Invoker player, you can line it up off of that 100 percent of the time. So right, but like I'm saying, like Invoker last time around didn't need the pull. Like he hits he hits sun strikes without like MSS helping him out a lot of the time. So if Shadow Demon's not there to disrupt, can he hit those sun strikes that need to get those kills or something? Remaining. That's gonna think I think the, yeah, the biggest. See thing, if so. Lelouch can step up here. He is five primarily their remaining. mid. I've seen him only on DK for like the last five games I've cast them. So it'll be nice to see some change there. Oh, it's the Death Prophet, and I was counting I was counting down to see when Ryu decided to pick that hero up. And it looks like it's going to be now. And so Death Prophet made going for Ryu. And this is a hero he loves to play. And, and they do have a bit of aggression coming up from the team. And I do like that in comparison to what Swag and Tiger has. So I, I personally like Pretty Boy Swag's lineup a lot better than the one they had last game. Yeah, and like it was, it was pretty obvious they were going for push. So I think the Death Prophet maybe could have been a better band right. than that puck. And I'm sure that Swag and Tiger has seen a few games of Pretty Boy Five Swag. They should know that Ryu right. Borus does like to pull that out. And playing in the mid lane. And so does everyone. It's not like it's uncommon or anything. Instead, they banned out the puck, worried about maybe a big team fight, team fight control, getting Dream Coiled next to an Al Luna who's got Eclipse activated. But we'll see how well they can push into Swag and Tiger. They've got some good counter push in the Shock Room that can just, you know, sit out there, clear the creep wave. And, and the Venomancer Plague Wards. I don't, I'm not sure if Glaive interacts with those uh, from the Luna. Uh, I don't know about that either, actually. That's a good question. And, well, I'm not quite sure about it, but we'll find out as the game goes on. Um, the thing is, though, they don't have any way... I mean, like, yeah, you've got the Venomancer Plague Wards, yeah, you've got the Chakra, but that's about it. I mean, maybe even Shadow Poison too. but the Chen's going to be there with his creeps. Luna's obviously going to do a lot of damage to the Glaive and the Death Prophet with the Ultimate. And I think the biggest deal for Swag and Tiger right now is making sure they gank that Luna early on. Because Death Prophet is very effective when she hits level 6, but her true effectiveness starts happening when she hits level 11 and gets to level 2 ultimate, I feel like. So stopping her advancing in terms of her levels is going to be, I think, the key point for Swag and Tiger here. Well, speaking of Swag and Tiger, Blue here, Clots 22, their captain has disconnected. And I'm looking oh, at God. the chat right now, and all I see is Steam is down, Network is down, Give Network, and, well, actually... He's back, so let's not worry about it. Okay, well, <laughs> they were just going to do it old school and just say, okay, what hero do you want to pick up? But it looks like he's there. They're going to go for the Gyrocopter and uh, a strong carry. Good uh, hero to round it all out with. Yeah, and again, he's going to help with uh, that, that counter push. It's Flat Cannon isn't quite what it used to be. The cooldown's a little longer, but 
Very nice to clear out the, uh, the creep wave quickly. Even deny your own tower while throwing out a flak barrage onto the enemy. And of course, there's always the chance for that Klotz 22 Divine Rapier. Yeah, we saw Evo get it in the last game, of course, between them, Swagger and Tiger, and of course, deny or not deny, excuse me, um, Force Revenge. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for them. But uh, yeah, I mean, if they're in a bad position, you do have that one item that you can go to. and. You know, it's going to be maybe a tough game, I feel like, for Swag and Tiger this time around, just because I do like Pretty Boy Swag's draft a lot more. I feel like they've got the heroes they want to get, but that's going to be it for, of course, the draft. We are going to jump into the game, ladies and gentlemen. It is game number two between Pretty Boy Swag and Swag and Tiger. On the side of Swag and Tiger, we've got Lelach V, Britannia on the Invoker. 420 will be on the Venomancer. Ned will be on the Shadow Demon. That is, of course, Ned, Eddard Stark. Warden of the North. Tab will be on the Timber Saw, and Klotz 22 will be on the Gyrocopter. And uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce Pretty Boy Swag? You, you just couldn't not make a Game of Thrones reference. No, I can't. It's like every time I see that <laughs> name, I'm just like, Lord Eddard Stark, yes. What a good game. All right, over on the Dire, we do have Pretty Boy Swag. It is Pandago on the Chen, like we expected, with sentries and that smoke to get those rotations going. Uh, into the offlane here, we've got Cakes on that clockwork. On the dire side, so look for him to have a big impact this game. I'm a Sheep Sucks here on his famed Rubik. I think he's a solid Rubik player. Uh, an MSS here filling in Demise's Luna shoes. Uh, carrying here, of course, on the Luna. And then into the mid lane, we've got Ryu Borus with three pulled tangles, a healing salve, and he goes for that Null Talisman to get him up to 59 damage. Yeah, I like that a lot more because her attack animation is not the best, and, and some damage slow. will alleviate that, I think. So I, I like the fact that he gets the Dull Talisman early on, especially against the Invoker, who actually went two pull tangos, three GG branches, and the Blades of Attack, which you don't see a whole lot of anymore. I feel like Blades of Attack is an item that no one really gets because of the way the things have changed, begins. but it works nonetheless. So it's going to be interesting to see who leads early on here in the mid lane. I think Crypt Storm's going to do a nice job of harassing, getting last hits. Pandago doing a nice job. Knowing that they warded here, he throws a sentry down, making sure that this camp is up and available to use. Uh, no other sentries, it looks like, here. Obviously, there's just a bizarre ward blocking the pole camp here. Other than that, not that much done. There's actually a really early smoke gank. Shadow Demon has double damage. This is not a good thing for Pretty Boy Swag. If they get caught out of position here, it's going to be devastating, especially with that double damage from Ned. So they've got Venomous Scale, they've got Disruption, they've got to be careful. Yeah, no damage, though, from that Venomous Scale. I'm sure most people are aware of the changes on rank 1. They could have maybe even went for Pandago's Chen here, just chilling back in the jungle. They, they would have known exactly where he is instead of sitting here waiting on the side of the lane where they don't really have the Equilibrium. They, I don't know. I guess they didn't block their offlane because all three were at the top rune. Yeah, it looks like they... Yeah, that's the thing. Is it, The Equilibrium is not going their way just yet. The good thing is, though, there is an award for the Dire Team, surprisingly enough. They didn't throw a lane ward here. Uh, actually, it's not, you know, they have one, obviously, on the river, but that seems to be it. I don't think there's another ward anywhere around here, unless I'm mistaken. I can't see it, so. Um, they If they want to go on somebody, they can. The problem is going to be, how is MSS going to get any farm right now? They they know that they're aggro try landing up top, and they have to find a way to deal with this in some way, shape, or form. Well, they're doing the right thing so far, playing very passive instead of maybe giving up a kill that could have been an early first blood for... Swag Ein Tiger, they've already got the momentum, if you will, coming off of the win in the game one. And Gyrocopter getting those last hits, six and four, zero and zero on Luna, completely isolated, and uh, has only got 126 points of experience thus far. Yeah, and so this try lane, they know that they're not getting necessary levels from Swag Ein Tiger, but they are stopping the farm of the Luna, and that's the biggest deal, I think. The problem is, eventually, as the big game keeps going, Reed's going to start pushing down towers, they're going to make room for the Luna anyways, but... If you're not getting off to a, at least a halfway decent start from SS, then I'm not sure what he could do in the later stages of the game, you know. The good thing is Cakes is he's being effective against Tabo. He's actually, no, well, I don't know if this is the best idea. Battery Salt's going, Rolling Death. He's actually out of mana right now. Cakes is trying to fit, trade here, and he's doing a lot of damage, but he's lucky there wasn't any, of course, you know, mana for Timber Chain. Or oh, that's so. Oh, Gets man. knocked off by that, the melee that creep. Self. Yeah, that creep. That's just... all the regen for Cakes, whereas Tavo still has two tangos, a magic stick now, and a healing cell. Yeah, Cakes has to be very careful. And luckily there's no mana coming out from Timbersaw. Otherwise he may be in be trouble he'd be in trouble dying, but that's not gonna be the case here. Pandago's roaming through there just trying to find some way to get everyone out of this lane, or at least push them back, and MSA still has zero last hits right now, and he's on a farming Luna, so this is a bit problematic. He actually does have his resilience, which he just got over time, which is nice and everything, but I don't know if that's going to be enough right now. Ryu is at least doing pretty okay. Of course, he's got 11 less hits right now. Chen's farming very effectively. 
Uh, Invoker's only got seven last hits. He's got four denies. But he's doing a lot better here in this mid lane. But for now, you know, Pandago's got to try to do something in the top lane. He's got to send his Centaur there, allow MSS to get a little bit closer in this creep wave. He knows he's got to be wary of getting disrupted or Venom is scaled, which is actually going to miss. Uh, That's a lot out. of mana for hitting nothing there, but the lifts, oh, whoa. First yeah. blood in the bottom lane, and Ned in trouble up top, going to get his faith tested, and he will drop. So they do trade across the lanes in the first blood there in the bottom lane. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that that first blood just happened. Otherwise, Pretty Boy Swag would be pretty happy, but unfortunately, Cakes does go down to first blood, giving a lot of money to that Timber side. He's at 1,200 gold. You can buy an energy booster outright if you wanted to, but he'll probably buy his boots beforehand. Uh, the, good, the good thing is at least MSS is getting some, you know, experience in gold from that kill, obviously getting last hits now, it's getting a three, so he's getting back into it. On the other side of things, Klotz, he, you know, he didn't go down. It looks like he's going to be going for, he's got boosts, he's got boots of speed, and obviously goes with haste, so either treads or a hand of Midas if he wants to. We'll see in just a couple of moments here. Yeah, we, I would expect, actually, hmm, I mean, I feel like phases is, is really the boots of choice on the gyrocopter, just getting that damage up yeah. a little bit faster, not going to get kited around, and you want to be able to keep up with people when you activate your rocket barrage, so maybe it is going to be the Midas even after those boots won, just looking to be a little faster in the aggressive lane, uh, but to talk about bottom, I'm, I don't know really what happened down there, I wasn't looking, but I think this is a matchup where Clockwork could, could afford to go two points for the power cogs, just so you can make sure that Timbersaw, who is always going to be in the melee range of the creep because if he's not then you know clockwork does a lot of damage and you could just drain his mana then he can't cast anything but more action down here yeah cakes is getting chased away there's no mana for tavo right now he's trying to right click but tavo can't get this kill on cakes he's not playing this matchup as effective as you might like him to do so on the other side of things, Ned and 420 smoking up, looking for a potential game. There's the disruption coming through, the Sunstrike as well. Now Luna in trouble, MSS Rocket Barrage, he should fall here and will. Just way too much damage, he gets bursted down so quickly. Sheep as well with the Soul Catcher, the right clicks. Oh, the Flat Cannon, one more hit might have done the job there, but not enough. So, an easy kill on the Luna with the help of the, of course, Invoker with the Sunstrike once again coming into play. And all of a sudden, it's 2-1. to one. Yeah, I like that a lot. One of the, a lot of times when you have that Invoker, Especially if a team is going to be maybe greedy and put a jungler so their supports aren't going to be roaming around as much. With that aggressive trialing and then the extra damage of the Sunstrike if you've got a, a solid Invoker player, which it looks like Lelouch is. He gets an assist off of that and he's doing okay. Maybe could be doing a little better in the mid lane farm. He's actually hitting for more, or at least the last time I checked, Invoker was last hitting for more damage and does have the better animation, but still Ryu Boru's with 27 and 7. Yeah, I think the X Factor there is the Crypt Swarm, honestly, and, and it, it continues to be. But obviously, the Forge Spirits are going to be coming into effect as well, and that's something you have to keep in mind. Top lane, uh, MSS is getting a little bit more room to farm now because they do have Pandago on the backside. Unfortunately, because Pandago is here, he's not getting the experience or gold he might like to have gotten. And this is a problem when it comes to, of course, dual lanes. So it's something that you have to keep in mind as, you know, we'll, we'll continue on here. The You know, Cakes is low. He's only level 6 right now. You look at Tavo. He's level 7, so bottom lane's not going as well. Luckily, Ryu is winning mid, and that is one lane going their way, but they need a lot more than that, obviously. Yeah, and I like uh, the, the aggressive lane here that they drafted up. It's so hard to push into that tier 1 tower, which it was very obvious from the get-go that they were going to want to do that with the Plague Wards not to mention the Shadow Poison and, of course, Flat Cannon if they need it, but we see Invoker rotating up now, and it looks like Radiant something has just scouted them out. Attack. Yeah, this is troublesome now. He does have his, of course, phase boots. He does damage. He's got Cold Sand. He's got a Forge Spirit. This is, they have no Creep Wave either. This is bad. They're going to get dope. TP is going to come through. Nice timing from that. That is going to be from Reeve. He's got his Exorcism. He's going to use it right now. Can they turn this around? Disruption's going to go. Can they catch anyone? It looks like no. They just push him out, and they waste that. But while that's all happening, Tavo gets another kill on the clock work down bottom and so even when they rotate through and save their team they're still losing something in in the end so yeah and the other team is content to run away they use that disruption defensively it looked like or, or putting the uh, pretty boy swag under actually and then just running away because there were only uh, there's only a stun there from the rubik that's it and i think he lifted someone and they didn't die maybe it was the gyrocopter that he lifted who does actually have his midas finished up right now oh boy well we seem to have some issues here. Sorry, guys. And I mean, it's just expected from the. No offense. I don't mean any offense by this, but whenever I'm casting a Brazilian team or a Peruvian team, it, there's a disconnect, like, no matter what. It's like whenever I'm casting any Dodo, there's a disconnect whenever. And updates. Yeah. yeah. There's actually. I'm not even kidding. There's an update every time I cast Dodo, so. Yeah, over the last week, there's been, like, three updates every. I've had the update, like, four times in one cast. Like, what is happening? I think Valve just doesn't like us very much for whatever reason, and that's kind of. 
not very good. So, um, well, there seems to be some issues here, ladies and gentlemen. What's important to note is that just from fighting alone in farm, there's a 1500 gold lead going for Swag Iron Tiger, which is kind of ridiculous. The experience lead is about 1000, almost 1500 itself, so that's also pretty good. And and the net worth, you can just see the top three are the farmers in each lane. You got the top lane, you got the mid lane, you got the bottom lane as well. So. Oh, oh, I don't know what play. what the issue is here for Pretty Boy Swag, but we have some problems coming through right now. It looks like some disconnects on top of, of course, just issues being them not farming effectively. And, well, Swag and Tiger just going to town here. So, we'll hope somebody gets back in in a moment. I'm not sure if they will, but we'll find out. I'm actually okay with the pause now. I just had dinner delivered to me, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stuff my face in the next couple seconds. Okay, sounds good. Excellent. So, 7.13 in. It is game number two. Obviously, 420 does reconnect. We're still waiting on MSS. Uh, 420 apparently had. He said he was going to update, but that's not correct because he wouldn't be back into the game. So I don't know what happened there. MSS, we're still waiting on him. I'm not sure what the deal is there. Um, he'll be back in, in in just a moment, hopefully. But uh, no. All right. Looks like we have more disconnects. Uh oh. This, yeah, this is not a good sign. This is not a very good sign. Musical, musical disconnects. Who's gonna go next? Um, I'm gonna say we're gonna keep with the trend. It's gonna be like sheep or something. I don't know. Sounds good to me. We just need the music. We need Coddle Guy with his uh his line in iPad to just queue up the music right now. I cast with him last night. He was just pulling out random sound clips. Coddle Guy seems to have like everything like a soundboard person would really like to have. He just got his like I don't know. I wish I had what he had. It's pretty amazing, but uh, that coddle mask, I'd I'd buy that. Yeah, that too. I have to ask him how he does it with all, of course, of his, uh, like you mentioned, his like line and stuff, like the Rune Watch music, what have you. Like even when we were playing Daisy, he like turns on the AT music, and like he just like has that over his microphone, and people. Are, like, he just has an auxiliary cord going into the line in on like a sound card, where you just set it as an input. Yeah, I should do that. That seems like a really good idea. It's very simple. Yeah. I don't know how he gets, like, everything set up. Like, he has, like, everything ready, though. Like, he's got all the music and the sound effects skilled up, ready to go. So, like, he has his own soundboard or something. It's more impressive than mine, which was the OG soundboard. Yeah, like when you do your hype intro with the uh, the music. Yeah, I, mean, I can't do that for a Dirty 2 Canada Cup game, because then I just get, like... A cease and desist letter, and people would yell at me. Ah. Well, we're paused again. We are. It's Dota. It's a. It's an official match. Were there any pauses in game one? It didn't look like there were. There was like a brief one. Invoker Re was getting ganked mid, and he disconnected. Ah, cool. And they paused because he disconnected, and then out of the pause, they just killed him. Like sometimes you see people be mad and like let him go if like there was a pause, and, like he's getting ganked. But Swag and Tiger is like no mercy, and we're we're fucking killing you. So he just got killed really easily. So it was kind of sad for you, but it happens. Seven hundred dollars on the line here in this amateur slash borderline professional match. That's that's a lot of money uh, for these guys playing in a tournament. I like to consider it semi-pro, but yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it is, and and this is it's not necessarily about the money. It's about showing people that you actually have like. You, you could play at a high skill level and, and pretty much swag. I mean, people like understand that they've done work because like they beat speed gaming, albeit speed gaming had stand ins, but like it's still a really good team, even with stand ins. So, pretty I mean, their stand ins were like some of the best Dota players in the world. It's so. like, oh, yeah, we got Universe. It's like, uh, yeah, he's pretty good. And then the other one was, um, Kuroki. Yeah, it was Kuroki. So, like, I mean, granted, they were on different roles than they normally play, but uh, yeah, it was still impressive. Which, which means, I mean, Pretty Boy Swag is obviously trying here, so just goes to show you how good Swag Guy and Tiger actually is. I mean, even playing from Brazil, likely with you know slightly higher ping. Oh yeah, it's like three hundred or two fifty or something, and that's in the pause, so that's even like more different. So. It's like hyperbolic time training. They're gonna come to a land and they're just gonna beat Navi or whoever is good these days. LGD China. <laughs> Just be whoever. Just gonna beat speed gaming. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, we'll see. I, I like. 
I was thinking, like, a lot of these teams in, like, not only, like, obviously North America and South America, but Korea as well are starting to get good. And I'm not sure what they're going to do for, like, the TI4 qualifiers, but I think it's going to be more different than – it's going to be different than what it was Happen last in year. Korea. I think that would be pretty crazy, but – I think, like, there's going to be, like, one Korean team. I think they'll let, like, one or two Korean teams through for the Western qualifiers. And then for the Eastern qualifiers, there's going to be, like, hopefully one or two South American teams just to represent everybody. Yeah, they definitely need to get uh, some South American teams some spotlight. There's some good people down there. I hope PBS, I hope PBS gets a slot in the qualifiers as well. Maybe if they win enough tournaments, they can even get invited. Hoy. But probably not, so. I mean, there's no more Dignitas. Like, who else are they actually going to invite? I mean, I guess you can't really invite EG this time around unless they, like, go on to tear, which can happen, but I'm not sure. I mean, Liquid's getting invited for sure. So, yeah. I mean, because even if even, li even if Liquid it. haven't, like, won a ton of tournaments, like, in the past couple of, like, months, they're still a top-tier team for sure. But uh, anyways, enough about Liquid and all that jazz. We are going to jump back into the game. It is game number two between Pretty Boy Swag and Swag and Tiger. We had some server issues. We're going back into it. As you can see, Pretty Boy Swag's down like 1,500 gold right now and 1,500 experience. So they have to get their way back into this. And right now, they really don't want to get caught up position. Pandago actually gets disrupted here, taking some damage. There's the telekinesis going through. The stun as well onto net, but the rock for sheep caught way out of position. A pause coming through from Lash Britannia. What? What is that manner pause? Oh, man. You okay? Oh, man. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that was good mannered or, or wow, bad. Wow, Ned actually died. Hookshot coming through. Cakes was trying to fight this. Cakes is in it. Clots in trouble. MSS with a huge kill to pick it back up and get it back into this game. Cakes rotating through at the right time. Here comes Tavo, though. They've got to get out. Timber chain. Cakes. Oh, so much damage from that timber chain. Not enough to grab the kill. Tavo would get back. You can see the Centaur Conqueror with another stun lined up, but they're saying, okay, no more of that. We're done here. And so, attack. Cakes with a good rotation gets them back into the game with MSSS getting a nice kill there. Yeah, he picks up an assist, and Cakes, you know, is able to retreat back to the base, but that's Tavo rotating over. Uh, I guess that not picking up a kill or an assist, attack. but he's still doing well, and I talked about a little in the top lane how it's hard to push into the Shadow Poison, the Plague Wards, and the Gyro, who are, they're all doing well in that, that tri lane there. And then, of course, the Timbersaw, the more levels he has, with if rank 2 Shocker comes up before Pretty Boy Swag is able to take down some towers, uh, they might find themselves on the back foot for a long time this game. Yeah, it's really going to come down to who can get more levels quicker, I feel like. The, the Timbersaw or the Death Prophet. Timbersaw is leading in that regard, but Ryu is actually in the mid lane right now getting some experience, whereas the Timbersaw has to go back home and regen. So it's a bit of a race, actually. We don't kind of like think about it too often, but timing in Dota is really important for hero levels, I feel like. The, the, whoever has the better timing is going to obviously be in a better position as the game progresses. So that's something to keep your eye on. MSS getting farm is also something to keep your eye on. He's still down a lot of CS. He's actually up to 23 right now, but you look at the Gyrocopter, he's got 51. So he's doing very well. He has his Midas. He's got a Ring of Akil. He's got Boots of Speed. So Gyrocopter's feeling very good about himself. What's not so good is that in the mid lane, the Lodge might get ganked here as there is a Smoke of Deceit. Uh, Sheep is going to lead the way with Telekinesis in, and here we go. Is he going to get caught out of position? It looks like he knows something is coming. He's not trying to go to the low ground right yeah, now. Yeah, he's playing very defensively. And they can't get him. He's too far right right now. He actually gets cold snap on him. Sheep sucks. He's in some trouble as well, trying to get his way out of there. And uh, that should be the end of that. This is the signal for top, though. They go on the Luna, but they don't decide quick enough. Ned gets there, finally puts her under. The Soul Catcher to land, but the TP's coming. Tavo. Well, this could be the Timbersaw's first death behind the tower here. MSS. No! MSS disappears, Tavo with the shock room, and of course the whirling death. Definitely the death of the Luna while Cakes comes in with a hook. Right into the Timber Cell. Will take him down one for one there, but it's a, it's a decent trade for Swag Iron Tiger. Yeah, they like that. They like taking down the Luna, making sure she can't get any more farm. While that's happening, Klotz is farming away bottom. He's, it looks like he's trying to just get this tier one tower, and he may do so. Luna picks up her treads, and. It's a bit of an issue right now. Ryu's not being very effective in ganking, rotating, and getting, you know, any towers right now. He's still just trying to get levels right now. And, and at least they get the Timber Saw, but is that really worth it? And when you lose your Luna, it, it's it's not. So, Dyer's bottom tower the is thing is, at least Pandago's getting farm. He's level 6 now, so he has Hand of God. Excuse me, he has Hand of God. He picks up a Smoke of the Seed. He's got a Buckler, so he's building towards Mech. And now we continue on at 20, 1045. I mean, there still is a bit of a lead. It's still 1,000 lead for uh, Swag and Tiger for gold and experience. So... Uh, it's going to be a tough game, I feel like, for MSS to get back into this. Dyer's bottom tower has yeah, I mean, Pretty Boy Swag, of course, they're not that far behind. A thousand is, is notable at just the 11-minute mark. 
But they've, they've got a strong late game. I mean, MSS, if he does manage to farm up, maybe a drums and a BKB. He might just want to rush the BKB after that. Dyer's after this, uh, I guess now. He does have the Bracer like he wanted to go for drums. And then Death Prophet can carry pretty hard that physical damage. BKBs don't matter about it. But top lane. Top yeah, Ned gets hooked in. Nice disruption coming through. The Centaur Khan missed with his stun. Now Pandango taking a lot of damage. Chakra whirling death. He's not dead yet. He's about to be. Hand of God, where is it? He's out of mana. Venom is still coming through. Tavo is low. There's two kills. Sheep stole Timber Chain, but here comes Clots. There's the call down. They gotta get out. There's gonna be the Lucent Beam. And there's gonna be, of course, the rocket flying through as well. But a two for one trade in the end actually going the way of Pretty Boy Swag. And Cakes isn't done yet. TP's coming through. Now he's gotta back off Ned's here. Disruption. Rocket Rush is ready. Goes on the Centaur Conqueror. Cakes trying to fight. Cox, Battery Assault, Clots. Try to trade. Lucid Beam, they trade a kill for kill. MSS picking up Clots is a bigger deal there. Sunstrike, MSS avoids it. Nice play. I'm actually surprised Pretty Boy Swag backed off. I mean, Flat Cannon was already used. That Gyrocopter had no mana. Three heroes were dead. Invoker was clearly just chilling in the mid lane. They, they could have easily, I think, killed that, uh, that Gyrocopter without taking any losses. But even... Though they, they get him in the end, Cakes goes down, and it's still worth it for Pretty Boy Swag, who now lead by one kill, 8-7. to seven. Yeah, and, and I, I would, you know, that's a big pickup for them, and I agree. They they maybe didn't need to back off there, but Ryu, this is the important thing to note, everybody, is that we've seen Ryu and most Death Prophets go into sort of a carry aspect where the, you just either can't kill them or they're taking out towers or you can't fight into it. So it's important to note that despite Pretty Boy Swag being down, they're not really out of this game yet. MSS getting kills is a big deal as well. He's trying to get to Drum next, like we talked about already. Um, the Midas's are going to start coming to effect, obviously, but you have to deal with, obviously, Death Prophet push, and Ryu could very well go for uh, a Necro book here. He likes to go Yule Scepter, but I think maybe Necro might be the more appropriate choice. I'm not sure. Uh, he is getting close to level 10, and then level 11 is going to be the big deal when he gets to level 2 ultimate, like I keep talking about. So for right now, Helium, I think this is still a relatively even game, especially after that last engagement top like you talked about. Yeah, I think it's extremely even. After that fight in top, they pretty much erased, you know, everything that went poorly in the lane. There's, I mean, a 3,000 gold, 4,000 advantage, but that's mainly just because of towers right now. And the tier 1s are down, so if Swag and Tiger wants to get anything or any more momentum for themselves, or even get the momentum back, they're going to need to smoke up and do something, or force a fight at a tier 2 tower, mm -hmm. which I don't know if they're going to be able to do and actually pretty boy swag maybe just going to force an engagement in the mid lane this could be risky for them they're, they're yeah. feeling the momentum but if they lose this then it's it's right back the other way they do have exorcism but this is going to be i think the the big point of the game disruption is going to go and there's the call down right now sheep is in a lot of trouble timber chain forward actually now he's going to try to dp out can he make it in time no he gets low he goes down exorcism goes right now but he's dead reuse dead pandango and just like you said they were feeling good they were feeling that momentum but a little too aggressive, and they lose three heroes and another tier one tower, it looks like. Yeah, that was basically just Rubik typing kill in console for a bit of a Counter-Strike reference. He, he suicided. He timber chained it into a tower and then immediately TP'd and died. So, of course, he didn't even provide his lift. Maybe he got it off right at the beginning. He didn't even steal a better spell. He is level 7, of course. He was timber chaining around. And that was without the Luna. I don't know why they thought they could take that, force a tower 4v5, and that might even open the door for Swag and Tiger to capitalize taking this first Roshan. Yeah, and, and you talked about them maybe needing to keep the aggression up with smokes, but if, if they have team fights going their way, they don't even need to do that. They continue to smoke, or they could even look for Roshan. And they're not taking it fast enough right now. They do have to be careful. Exorcism's not available, which is a good reason why they're... Oh, no, the hookshot missed. This is probably problematic now and actually Ryu does pick up a kill on Ned right now Hand of God does fly Klaus is trying to fight with his flat cannon doing some damage but not nearly enough and they're getting pincer moved right now you can see Pandago's roaming in there trying to get a kill TP coming through Klaus test of faith not able to stop that TP Sheep Telkinesis 420 gonna get brought back right now is there anything they can do here cold snap on Sheep now test of faith or excuse me hand uh, holy persuasion I couldn't think of the name for the spell they do steal that Forge Spirit there. MSS is back in. They make sure they don't take the Roshan. It's rather low. And maybe Pretty Boy Swag can try to steal this. Obviously, they have, you know, complete ward vision over the Roche Pit. There's a double damage rune here. If they get that DD rune, they can easily take this Roshan. But Chakram's going to keep this wave pushed in as well. I mean, whenever you have a Luna with that Lunar Blessing, which actually only three points in it right now, opting to put two into Moonglaive just so uh, MSS can go ahead and, and jungle a little more efficiently because he's, he's scared to be in the lane right now. Yeah, MSS is just 
I'm just with the hand of the da helmet of the dominator right now. He's gonna try to stack up ancients and she's actually gonna do that for him right now or try to. It looks like he won't get the stack off. I'd be very surprised if this stacks. It did. Wow. Radio's Boom. Top tower is under He's a little late to it too. Got really don't close. don't doubt the sheep. I guess I, I won't Dyer's from now on. Sorry. Tower is under attack. Well, I'm I'm a sheep pro. Yeah. He's a good player. Donald, nice guy. Like him. Good guy. Met him at MLG. Good player. Ryu is getting ganked. Uh, he does take a tower, but I don't know if that was really worth it. So he does buy his Yule Scepter. Actually, he just needs the uh, Void Stone to complete it up, but still, he gets a tier 1 tower, I guess, at the expense of his own life, which I guess is at least get down assess and the rest of his team. Still, though. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's worth it. Yeah. I mean, Timbersaw was there, too, to uh, pick up the XP on that. He's level 11, rank 2 Chakram. He's got the point booster now, so he's ready to build into that Bloodstone, and he actually picked up a casual urn beforehand. No other really urn carrier on the team. Actually, I take that back. Shadow Demon commonly carrying that urn, but, you know, Timbersaw, not a bad item for him. Some more mana regen, a little bit of tankiness. Volker's trying to solo this, Roshan. That's not going to work a lot. Even with the double damage rune, I don't think that's going to go for you. Um, and the surprising thing is they had these wards here for the Dire team for Pretty Boy Swag, and they could have contested that double damage rune at any point in time, but they decided against it. And Well, this is an issue now, right now, is do you contest this against double damage rune, against all the heroes coming out from Swag and Tiger? Do you have Exorcism? You don't, in 30 seconds, actually. So they know that it's not available, and they're, they're trying to be aggressive with it. The unfortunate thing is they're not taking Roshan, they're not just going right into the pit. They, they're having to push Death Prophet and the rest of the team back. So for now... Pretty much Swag are content just to say, okay, you're not going to take this. We're just going to try to farm. But while that happens, that's more Midas usage. That's more farm going for Clots. He's actually got his BKB and a couple hundred gold. Um, Ryu. Hook shot does oh, go in. By clock. 420 in a lot of trouble. Falls. He does get his Poison Nova off. But now there's it's four versus five, as you can see. Actually, Clots in some trouble. TP coming up from Kicks, I think. No. Ryu getting cold snap right now. Now the rest of the raiding team have to get back unless they can pick up this kill on Pandego. He doesn't have a mech. He does have that buckler. There's the exorcism right now. Can they catch Tavo? Can they catch anybody really? Hand of God is going to fly as well. And uh, it looks like they can't get anybody. Yule Scepter. There we go. Dyer's Courier does fall. Yeah, there's going to be the ice wall on the ground. Nice. Two heroes taking a lot of exorcism. A lot of damage going through the loud. She has Ghost Walk skilled up and ready to go. Kicks. No usage of that hookshot. It's not available. Cakes is trying to go in. He's got Cox. He doesn't want to go, though. Chakram does so much damage. Cakes is low. He will survive in the end. Death Prophet just trying to do whatever he can with his ultimate. It's about to expire, it looks like. So they're all heading right back into him. And now they're going to go for Roshan here. It's been kind of contested for the past couple of minutes. What can they do? And then soon Rosh is going to be back at full health, so it's going to be even a harder decision here. All right, maybe they won't have to contest it because killing it from full health is still going to take a while for both teams, unless you know all five go in the pit for Pretty Boy Swag. But I think this is the problem when you when you draft both the Luna and the Death Prophet together. It seems like such a good idea because their ultimates are so powerful. But then again, they have no disable. Everyone just runs away, and that's what we're seeing here. And I cast a game in Sivo last night, and that's exactly what I saw there. It was a Luna and a Death Prophet that just couldn't sync up and get their ultimates off in the same team fight. And it's still close. I mean, the Gold Graph, 5k, XP, 3k advantage for Swag, Eye, and Tiger. Pretty Boy Swag is just, it's, the team fights are awkward for them. Radiance yeah, it really is. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with Cake's not, like he hooked shot on Ned and he got a kill, I think, or was it, no, it was the, uh, it was the Venomancer. The Venom. Yeah, 420. So he hooked shot him and he got a kill and that's great and all, but if you don't have your Cox, there's no way you're going to be able to fight it as effectively as you would like to. Um, and the other disciples aren't quite there. I mean, you saw the ensnare come in from Chen, from Pandago. That was a big pickup, and he actually didn't have his mech during that entire engagement. Now that he has it, maybe it could be more aggressive, but like you said, there's not that many lockdown spells here for Pretty Boy Swag, so, and they're only getting more far behind, uh, further behind, excuse me, from the Gyrocopter as well as English. the Evoker. So, yeah, I know, it's not very easy for me anyway, so, jeez, gotta get back into it, guys. All right, Ned is walking further, there's a hookshot available, he's not using it, I think Ned's actually trying to bait here a little bit. Um, well, Klotz has picked up that BKB on the Gyrocopter, so 10 second BKB charges there, he's also got that Midas, which is really starting to pay off. His Black Cannon soon will be hitting hard enough that the Chen Creeper are going to disappear, and if they fight with the Midas, you're going to stick one out immediately. But the hook in from Cakes onto Ned, he's going to self-disrupt himself. Timbersaw lifted up your eye machine. The BKB off from Klotz on the Gyro. 
right. dishing out the damage, but Ryu with the exorcism. No, that call down gonna take cakes. They just stand in it, just dilly dallying around. The TP's attempted here. One of them gets out. Pandago actually gets out as well. So at the end, it's the cakes for Tavo trade. The timber saw and the clockwork. Yeah, and, and actually, they defend their 2-2 tower as well, so it's a little bit of a better trade, I feel like, for Pretty Boy Swag. Not by much, but still not too Radiant's bad, and um, under attack. I don't know, though. This is becoming problematic, because that's a fight that they engaged on, they did very well with, but there's just not enough damage. The BKBs are going to be an issue. At least they used some of the charges there. Uh, obviously, the first charge... Yeah, that was the something that maybe made that trade worth for Pretty Boy Swag. The 10-second BKB charge used up there by the Gyrone. He didn't really get anything out of that. Uh, he did take out the clockwork. He got the kill there. So 299 gold going his way. If we're talking carry versus carry, and I don't know if you agree with this, but I think that if the game goes long enough, I prefer Luna as a late game carry than Gyrocopter because they, with the flat cannon change, it's not, not as good as it was before. And yes, yeah, and the way the glaives right here, but... bounce between the mm -hmm. buildings once you break exactly. the base, I mean, you can destroy. If you go mid lane, you can pretty much get the tier fours and the racks at the same time. And actually, you might want to switch over to the net worth overall. Uh, we see the gyrocopter at about 12,000, the Luna only at 6,800, so yeah. there's a big lead for the gyro, a lot of ground to be made up here by MSS on the Luna. Yeah, but one or two good fights, it's some room to farm, and that may change, but it's going to be tough. You can see they're trying to push in, Ryu should have his exorcism, it actually is in about 11 seconds, so they can wait to try to defend this, and this is actually the problem, is that this pushing lineup isn't good enough to take a tier 2 tower at like a full fight, they have to try to engage on their own terms and not try to fight in as 5 versus 5 because they can't fight into that exorcism, especially if it's level 3, which it's not quite there yet, but it is getting close. Ryu's level 13 right now. He's got 2,000 gold in the bank. Uh, and we'll see what he wants to go for his next item. Sometimes we do see that Heart of Trash coming out for the Death Prophet. He already has his Jewel Scepter, so his next item is going to, I think, be telling of how this game is going to go. And he's kind of the hero that's really... Ryu's the player that's kind of just keeping them in this game. And it will be a Vitality Booster, so it is going to be that Heart of Trash coming out for the Death Prophet right now. Atos! Or Atos could be, but... No, it's not. It's going to be hard. Yeah, I mean, Ryu is more commonly... He, he commonly goes the hardest rest. I just like to shout random zero. things. Pretty much. That's what I'm getting at. So if but I just, yeah. I'm just going to like start shouting like random items during a game. Just be like S and Y or something, but... Middle of a team fight. Just like Skull Basher! Well, Cakes is getting actually wrecked right now, and yeah, he is dead. So that's what I was talking about. Now that they have that pick off on Cakes, they can maybe try to go for this tier two tower. So he he overextends just by a little bit, and all of a sudden that gives them the opportunity to look for this tier two tower here in this bottom lane. I mean, I guess that's just the nighttime vision. Maybe Cakes being far out. I mean, it's one or the other getting ganked there. Either Ryu Boar is farming up top or the Clockwork. Uh, there's not a whole lot of initiation here for uh, Swag Eye and Tiger. A four staff on their Invoker here is about as good as their initiation is going to get. Maybe Clock or not Clockwork. The Timber Saw just running in with the Timber Chain and getting, you know, forcing some Focus Fire out. But other than that, not a lot of initiation besides the Clockwork in this game. And he's on the side of Pretty Boy Swag. Currently 2, 5, and 6. Cakes? Kind of off his game on one of his favorite heroes. Yeah, it's it's uncommon to see him play not as you know not as well as he can on one of his favorite heroes. Like you mentioned, Exorcism's gonna go. Oh boy, Invoker taking a lot of that damage. Nice four step onto the low ground, and it looks like everyone's gonna get out again. And this is the problem. Like you mentioned, the, the Radiant Cure they did pick that no up stuns. at least. So, but now Tavo actually maybe in some trouble. Oh, he gets blown up and. That's a big kill there, because now with the Exorcism going, they can maybe try to take Roshan. It looks like Nan and the rest of the team want to try to contest this. Hookshot in, though, 420. Caught out of position. Battery Assault is going. The right click is there. 420, in trouble. He'll fall next. Buyback coming in from the Timber Saw immediately. Mech's going to go. And now, Spell was stolen. What was that? He does steal a Shadow Poison, which is nice, but not Soul Catcher. Cakes. There's going to be the homing missile on him. They want to try to fight this. They don't have poison over. They don't have venomous scale. Telekinesis clots. He's got BKB. They're going to send Cakes home right now. He is going to get out of there. Nice play. Get those cogs up in front of the Roche Pit. Well played there. Well, he gets them up in front of the Roche Pit, but, you know, Swag and Tiger's okay with that. They just run right in there. They're going to start, you know, taking out the Roche. We'll see. This has been a, an objective for quite some time now. They finally go back in. This looks like this could be the time where either a huge team fight's going to break out and Roche might actually die. It's about 1,500 HP. Oh, Tavo's taking a lot of damage. They want no to go in. Yet. Yeah, this is the problem, though. It's about to go down. Klotz trying to do his best. He's getting bashed up. It looks like he will take this Aegis. A lot of damage going his way. He is low. Can he go down? The hook shot, and he misses on him. Now the battery still the cogs not on point. Cakes way out of position. The Lucid Beam does take up the Aegis. There's the hand of God. 420 now taking the brunt of the battery still, but Death Prophet is already dead. Aegis is back. Now Klotz is at full health. Cakes is going to fall. Not a good fight. Pandega runs in, only to run right back out. TP coming through. MSS will make it out alive, but not a good trade. Yeah. <clears throat> Whoa. Oh, coughing.
Don't eat You're the right? steak with uh, seasoning on it right in the middle of a cast. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I mean, they forced out the buyback from the timber saw, and that that's nice there. And then they maybe could have just backed up immediately instead of maybe using uh, some more spells. I guess they used the send back. They sent the clockwork back home. His hook wasn't going to be up either way, but it was kind of awkward. Pretty boy Swag wins the fight, but with that buyback available, it was almost better for Swag Guy and Tiger because it opened up the Roche pit and they capitalized on it. Uh, luckily, Cake's hook had about one second on it when the Aegis got picked up from Clot, so they were able to drop that immediately. Yeah, but like, with him dropping that, you know, they lost way too much for it, so, like, this is problematic now. You look at what MSS has got here, he does have his BKB, he just picked it up, and the thing is, you know, he's even in terms of, like, items, for the most part, other than the Midas. But there's also 5,000 extra gold in the gyrocopter now, so he's actually like one item ahead here, and, and this is now going to be an issue. At least now with the farm that MSS has and the levels he's getting, once he gets like level 16 and he's got full glaives and he's got full eclipse, he can start fighting in teamfights more effectively, but like, this is just a bit questionable as what they can do next. And Death Prophet's not even level 16 yet, he's trying to get to it, but it's still a couple of minutes away here. I mean, if Klotz wants it, he can pretty much get the Divine Rapier pretty soon. Probably not what he's going to go no, for. He's no. got a, the Mantis tile is going to be a pretty good option. Uh, maybe just an MKB to hit even harder. Make sure you can take out the Death Prophet. And even with the Yule Scepter, it doesn't seem like they're struggling too much to burst down Ryu Borus. He's 3-3-2, three, three, and two, and with a big AoE ultimate like Exorcism, you'd expect maybe some more involvement uh, in the assists column. Well, I'd say hold your hold your thoughts until Ryu does hit level 16 and he gets a Heart of Trash, because when that happens, if that happens, then I feel like this game is going to be a lot different, at least the complexion of the game. So there is still, wow, a 10,000 gold lead for Swag and Tiger. It seems like it would be a lot less than that, but that's just the way the game's been going for Pretty Boy Swag, and Swag have been playing out of their minds once again, obviously. In game I mean, look at the tower like, advantage right now. Yeah, yep. I mean, it's just been it's just been going their way pretty much for the entire game, and and that's ex how you expect it to go, especially with how the you know how game one went. It's not surprised that game two went just as you know one side. And obviously the game's not over yet; they're still a long ways away. And, and the kill score is relatively even, and you can never count out a Luna, especially played by one MSS. But this is still going to be a difficult, difficult game. And with Clots playing, if he gets another item like you talked about, being an MKB something along those lines, it's going to be even harder, I feel like. And he's actually there. He's He's got 6,000 gold. I don't know what he's saving up for. If he goes for He a... might just be waiting to see if there's going to be a, a butterfly coming out on the Luna, which, I mean, that's nowhere close. But if it, if it were to just pop up, then he wants to be able to buy the MKB right away. Oh, my God. All that farm of that ancient stack with the double damage and flat cannon. Disgusting. Just I mean, at this rate, he can get an MKB and a butterfly before the Luna even picks up her butterfly. Yeah, the farm is just too much coming out. I mean, you look at the net worth, you look at the GPM. He's all, he's above 600 right now, and that's that's just it's getting out of control at this point. I mean, he's sitting at like 70. Butterfly it is. Yeah, so I, I like the butterfly actually because I think mischance works with exorcism. Maybe I'm wrong, but well, exorcism has a big tooltip disclaimer, and it says something about not being reduced by damage block abilities, of which evasion isn't. So maybe it does. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. But... That didn't really help, but it doesn't work on Vanguard or Poor Man's Shield. Good to know. Exorcism. Good to know. All right, well. Not that there are any of those. And uh, Cakes finishes up his four staff, so now he can uh, hope to isolate somebody, but when you're isolating a gyrocopter, it doesn't matter. You you cog him in, and gyrocopter's like, all right, I'm fine with that. No one can right-click me now if they're melee, and then I just have flat cannon 1,000 range. He's okay to just sit in the cogs. Well, this is... I don't know what you do. I feel like they're trying to defend this tier 2 tower, but now the item advantage is in a way where Swag and Tiger can get away with taking fights pretty liberally, but now Death Prophet's about to hit level 16. He's about to... He has the heart of Trask, actually, so this game does change uh, a little bit, so... Telkinis is going through. That's Claude's getting caught out of position. Wow, she just got killed. The meatball. Yeah, that, that rolled right over him. and <laughs> just wrecked him, so... Uh, maybe they think, okay, we can't really defend right now, and, and they just let the 2-2 two, go. I mean, you're already out. down so many towers, you might as well at this point just sit on your high ground and wait for the push, because losing a fight here at the tier 2, if we check the buybacks, only Luna has one, and if you Luna's buying back at this point, it's it's really going to make the game that much harder. So losing a fight here could potentially lose a Rax, or even just force out the GG from Pretty Boy Swag if they want to get the game over with. It is a best of five, so they've got one more game to start turning things around. 
Oh, there's the hook shot in the class right now. It's, BKB is going to go. Eclipse is going through. There's the hand of God as well. Exorcism being used. Timber Chan from the side. Tabo coming in hot. There's three kills already. Double kill for Klotz with the damage he's gotten. And now MSS has just to lift his way back there. He has to BKB as well to avoid that shock from damage. And suddenly, I mean, that's the, the fight lost. Again, like you talked about, now they can high ground. So just like that. Yeah, three heroes dead, a BKB with 70 seconds cooldown remaining. MSS almost gets taken out by a Sunstrike even on the way back to base. And they do have the Glyph of Fortification, so that'll buy him about five seconds here. And I was talking about how important it was for level 16 ultimate and, and, and obviously the heart of Tarask and it just, it didn't even matter. There's just too much damage for Swagon Tiger. So this is going to be a tier 3 tower, maybe even a set of racks. They might not want to stay too long, but all of the ultimates are pretty much down right now. And there's not much that I feel like MSS and the rest of the team can do here. So uh, Demonic Purge is going to go on Pandango. They can dive him if necessary. Rock Barrage, Black Cannon, what have you. Uh, Alacrity is up on him right now. He's been spammed consistently on the Gyrocopter. That's going to be the ranged racks. The melee racks is about to fall yeah, as well. Yeah, we didn't even talk about that. It's yeah. really strong. Hookshot somehow misses on all of them, despite looking like it went through everybody. So without Hookshot now, this is very problematic. Disruption's going to go. There's going to be the flat cannon. Pandango's taking damage. He is going to get obliterated from the chakra. Ryu's going to get deafening blast. He's going to use scepter himself up into the air, but it looks like he's about to fall as well. Too much damage going his way. One more. No, he will survive in the end. It looks like no, the poison taking down on him and taking him out. So three more heroes dead. A set of racks gone, and... Well, it looks like the bell is uh, starting to toll for Pretty Boy Swag here. Yeah, absolutely. There's a Necro 3 now picked up here on 420 that support Venomancer, so that's going to help out with the push. Not that they really even need it at this point. This gyro is just too far ahead of anybody. 2,000, 2,000, make that 20,900 net worth. The Invoker, even with the Sheepstick 4 staff, 3.4k in the bank, so he can get a BKB if he needs to go for that carry. He can even go right click if he wanted to. and. I don't know. I, I don't think PB Swag is coming back from this, but hopefully they come back in the series overall because I'd like to see some more games here tonight. Yeah, I, I don't expect Pretty Boy Swag D3-0 to be a pretty big shocker and upset, I think, for everybody involved. So, Klotz is going to get disrupted right now. Nice offensive disruption cakes. There's going to be, of course, the cogs just to make sure everything gets out of there. Klotz does fall in the end. A nice little pickup, but they're losing a lot of health in the process. So... In. You know, it, it's going to be a tough, a tough the sell for them to try to defend this. They, they at least grab the kill on Klotz, but I think it's too little, too late, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah, it was maybe a little bit of a dive there by Klotz on the gyrocopter, going into almost the tier fours, then getting pushed back by Cake, showing up with the good cogs. And I, I don't know. I think this Chen, they picked it up really early, along with the Luna as their third pick. So right away, it, it was pretty obvious that Pretty Boy Swag just wanted to push the safe lane, and Swag and Tiger made, made sure that was never going to happen. In their solo safe, they put another hero that's hard to push into, and then in their mid lane, they put a hero that's fairly hard to push into with Forge Spirits with the long Tornado initiation that you can get with more points in Wex. And I just think maybe a bit of an outdraft. Pretty Boy Swag just mm -hmm. never really got it going this game. Yeah, the cakes with the underwhelming performance. I was praising the draft from Pretty Boy Swag, but then I realized that if you aggro try up against what they had, it was just too much for him to deal with. And they had Roam, Panda go through, losing out on levels, losing out on experience, gold, what have you. And, uh, and of course, Tabo having a really good time. Tabo had extraordinarily impressive play up against Klaxu or Cakes, who just had not the best game for himself. So, Haste. and Rio and the Death Prophet, you usually see him be so, you know, polarizing on that hero, and it just didn't happen this game. And with the Gyrocopter farming up at 600, almost 700 GPM, this game is starting, obviously, it is out of hand at this point, but you have to kind of just recompose yourself and say, okay, game number three, we have to get this game in the bag or else we're going to go down and You just got to pick the cakes, Bristleback or Nature's Prophet. Like, where has that been at? Well, they banned the Bristleback both games so far, so. Ridiculous. And I saw the uh, I saw the Nature's Prophet. It Radiance was in game one, but of course Swagon Tiger attack. was playing it. Yeah, and that was. I mean, it looks like the teams definitely know each other because Pretty Boy Swag, they do like to run the Enchantress and the Chen, but Swag Eye and Tiger, they really like their Chen as an MSS getting picked out there in the middle lane. Uh, they like their Chen a lot, so maybe Pretty Boy Swag drafts it to sort of deny them and, and beat them with their their own strat. I don't know. Swag versus Swag here, so it's the battle of, of the Swag. So who can. For sure. America who can versus Brazil. Swag. Who can have the most Swag right now? And it looks like, honestly, the Brazilian Swag is getting the way, and they're going to get another kill going their way. That's Tabo on the Timber Saw. He's been all over the place. He's got 15 Bloodstone charges, the BKB. Just sitting there, why not? Still has 10 charges, by the way. And now the tier 3 tower, excuse me, the Rax is exposed in the mid lane. Looks like they're going to go for it here with Klotz doing so much damage to Butterfly and the MKB. Just picking this 
racks apart. Buyback from the Luna, but it is going to be too little too late once again, as of course both Raxes are going to fall here. Down bottom, tier three towers getting focused. They want to try to go on Tavo. There's going to be the pendants. Tavo's going to get taken up with Rack by Stolen, by the way. Look at the Chakram, though, the Timber Chain, as you can see. BKB going through. MS is trying to fight Sheep, just getting chased down. There's the Eclipse killing the Louch, actually, doing a lot of damage to him, but MS has about to die as well after he did buy back. It looks like a couple more right clicks, and there's the game. GG is called. What a play coming out from Swag and Tiger. And they will take game number two, looking to close the series out 3 0 as we move forward here in the Dota 2 Canada Cup Grand, Grand Finals. Once again, my name is Mott. With me tonight is Helium. Helium, thoughts on that last game? Anything before we head out of here? Helium, hello? You're, sorry, your Skype is, is going, you know, hey, what it does. All I right, well. figured you were still talking, but I couldn't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, you're good. Okay. Any any closing thoughts slash plug slash shout? Uh, we'll you you mentioned that timing, the the timings being important in Dota 2. When you think of timings, you think maybe more sort of the StarCraft genre, I guess, or just StarCraft in general. But mm -hmm. PB Swag didn't hit any of their timings. And the one point where they had the team fight, they got the momentum back. They went mid lane as four, not even fully committed, and they just threw it away immediately. And then after that, it was all downhill. And as for plugs, you can follow me on Twitter at Helium.